What's going on engineers? This is part 10 of the Node.js basic series and we're talking about HTTP, both how to create a HTTP server as well as make HTTP calls as if you're the client. This is an extremely important module because the whole purpose of Node.js was to bring JavaScript to the back end and create network connected applications. So to serve that, especially from an HTTP standpoint, this is the core module that's, that's in use. And there's tons of projects that are underpinned by the HTTP module. However, we're going to look at the actual Node.js HTTP module rather than looking at any abstraction you know, somebody made by way of a community module, such as Express. So let's jump in. So we're going to be looking at two things here in this video. On the right side, we're looking at the server code. On the left side, we're looking at the client code. So the server, we're going to start up, and then we're going to make requests with the client to the server. And all these two programs do is the client will send the text present in the message variable over to the server. The server will then take that data and just send it back to the client. So it's kind of like a, an echo endpoint. So in both cases, to use the HTTP module, you do require HTTP. So to create the server, you're going to use HTTP.createServer. And createServer takes, takes one argument, and that's going to be a callback for every connection that is made to that server. Now HTTP.createServer itself returns a server object, which down here you then call .listen on, and then you can provide the port and as well as the host. So what I've done here is I've created a server that listens on port 9090 and accepts connections on all IPs. So now let's talk a little bit about what happens when an actual request comes in. Upon every request, it's going to call this callback with a rec, which stands for request, and a res, which stands for response, variable that contains information about each. So what we're doing here is we're preparing our response. We're saying let content equals you know, blank string to start, and then the rec variable, there's a couple of events that we're going to subscribe to. One is called data, and one is called end. So we do rec.on data, and then this callback is going to be called each time there's data that comes in. So what we're going to do here is simply append that data to the content variable. Then we're subscribing to the event called end. And this callback is going to get called once the request from the client ends. So as soon as that ends, we now know all the data has been received. We can then use res.write, send the content, and then call res.end, which will end the response. So in effect, if somebody sends the server the word hello, it's going to send back hello. If it sends a smiley face, it's going to send back a smiley face. If it sends nothing, then it sends back nothing. So let's start up this server and see what happens. So on this right terminal, I'm going to do node, HTTP server, and it'll start. So you see it's not doing anything, and that's because right now it's just it's waiting for new connections. Port 9090 is open and ready for business. So now we use a second terminal, we'll test this out. So remember, the server's running on 9090. So we can use curl, we'll make a call to 127.0.0.1, port 9090, and then we're going to pass it some data. Remember, this is going to echo back whatever we send it. So we will send it the data, hello, you know, with a smiley face. And you can see that it replies with hello and a smiley face. So it's doing what it should do. It's echoing back whatever data I send it. Now it's important to understand that this callback that gets called per request is a callback for every request. It's not one set of code for all the requests. Every single time a request comes in, it starts a brand new callback, and you get a brand new rec object, a brand new res object, an empty content, and then you do everything you need to do in that spot, and you can treat it like an individual request. So we use curl to test the server, and it worked fine. So let's go ahead and use the actual Node.js HTTP module to make a client request. So on the left-hand side, we have the client. And we're first establishing a message. We're saying, what message do we want to send it? So we're going to send hello and then a smiley face. Next is going to be an object of, of different options. And there's a number of these we're going to have to fill out. You know, we have to say that we're, we want to use a get method. The host is going to be 127.0.0.1. It's port 9090, you know, which matches the server. The path is just the root path, just slash. And then we got to set up a couple of headers manually. You know, we got to say the content type is text plain, and then the content length is going to be message.length. So that should be, what, five, six, seven, should be eight. That way the server knows how many, how many bytes it should read. To actually make the request, we're going to use HTTP.request. And this takes two arguments. The first argument is going to be the options object that we just did. 
The second argument is going to be the actual response callback. And this is going to get, basically, it's going to make a request to the server. As soon as the server sends back data, it's going to call this callback. And then you can, you know, listen on, you know, for data that comes back, as well as when the response has ended. And you notice that this is almost exactly like the server side, except we start with an empty content. We say response on data, append all the data that comes into content. And then once the response ends, simply output the content. But remember, that callback happens once a response comes back. We still have to execute the actual request. And we do that by saying rec.write, and we pass it the message, and then rec.end. So let's open both our terminals again, and we'll do this by way of the actual client. So on the right side, we got the server running. On the left side, we're going to do node HTTP client. And when we run it, you can see that hello comes back. So if I wanted to change that message, I would simply change it here set that to like Brian. And then when I come to execute again, it says Brian. So it's echoing back exactly what I send it. So it's working. And just to prove that it is using that server, if I were to do control C over here to close the server and I execute it over here, you can see that there's now an error. Econ refused 127.0.0.1 port 9090. So now I just want to talk briefly about some of the third party modules like this is very difficult to use because it's it's kind of lower level stuff, but it offers you the, the greatest flexibility. So there are modules out there that handle you know, serving HTTP requests you know, a lot easier. One example of that is Express. And they hide all this complexity, having to manage all the events and the data and the end. And then there's also modules that handle the client side, like requests. And that, that hides a lot of this complexity, having to manually do headers, having to manually specify, you know, all this data. You still have to specify some of it, but, I mean, you don't have to go to the lengths of specifying the actual length of the message, you know, or basically registering for events and having to handle those individually, you know. All that kind of complexity is hidden by, by these newer modules. But when it comes to Node.js and network connected applications, making HTTP requests and serving HTTP requests are just extremely important. So in this case, we did it the hard way, you know, but there are easy ways. I recommend you check it out again for HTTP servers, check out Express and for HTTP client, check out requests. Now in the title you saw I said HTTP slash HTTPS. I don't have an HTTPS example. All I'm going to say is that the HTTPS is identical to HTTP, except you can specify a certificate and private key, and Node itself will do the termination of SSL. The reason I don't give an example in the video is because you really shouldn't do it that way. You should be using a, a web server like Nginx or Apache which does the SSL termination for you, and then proxies request through to Node in an unsecured fashion. That, that's the typical pattern that you'll find in production for most people. But if you have some use case where you need it, certainly read up on it at nodejs.org. And that's it for HTTP. If you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the comments below, or come on to Discord and, and let's chat about it. Otherwise, see you on the next video.